salt substitute and stroke study is the first large trial of a salt reduction strategy to show unequivocal ev evidence of benefit for clinical outcomes. SAS was a cluster randomized trial done in 600 villages in rural China and enrolled 21,000 people who either had a history of stroke or were aged 60 years or above with poorly controlled blood pressure. Participants were randomized at the village level to either a potassium enriched salt substitute or continued use of regular salt. Follow-up was for an average of 4.7 years. And during that period, we accrued about 3,000 strokes, 4,000 deaths, and 5,000 major adverse cardiovascular events. As anticipated, the salt substitute reduced systolic blood pressure by about three millimeters of mercury. And this drove protective effects against each of the primary and secondary outcomes. We saw a 14% reduction in the risk of stroke with a p-value of 0 0.006. And a 13% reduction in major cardiovascular events and a 12% reduction in premature death. Both of those had p-values less than 0 0.001. Importantly, we didn't see any evidence of an adverse effect on hyperkalemia with a hazard ratio of 1.04 and confidence intervals that spanned unity. A couple of key questions arise in regard to interpreting the study results. And the first of these is whether the result is likely to be generalizable beyond the study population in China. My response to that is probably yes, because the physiology of sodium, potassium and blood pressure is incredibly constant across diverse populations. And if you get a blood pressure reduction with salt substitution, you're very likely to get clinical benefits as well. The second question is whether we really proved the absence of hyperkalemia risks, because we didn't do serium, serial potassium assessments during the study. What we did do is routinely search databases for all participants every six months for any events attributable to hyperkalemia, and we saw no evidence of any increased risk. We also saw no evidence of any increased risk of sudden cardiac death, which could be attributed to arrhythmias caused by hyperkalemia. So what does this mean for clinicians? Well, I think for the first time, they can feel confident about telling their patients that they have a salt reduction strategy that they're likely to be able to comply with, and that is likely to drive clinical benefit. I'm pleased to say that the results of the SAS study are now available to read in the New England Journal of Medicine.